Hey, welcome back to episode five. This is going to be part two of how to debug AWS Lambda functions uh, with the SAM CLI and VS Code. In our first part, we went ahead and we connected to the project root. We pointed to the source code and to our Lambda handler. We use the uh, SAM direct Lambda handler invoke for that particular functionality. Now, in this episode, we're going to kind of go to the next step, which is use the template based Lambda invoke. Um, the reason we're going to be going to this one now is for future episodes when we start looking at um, packages and more complex uh, directory structures for a Lambda, you really kind of need to start looking at the template based Lambda invoke. Um, and then later on, we'll take a look at the API gateway Lambda invoke that then basically kicks off a, an, an API gateway that then passes its payload onto the Lambda invoke, uh, kind of chaining those together. So in order to do the template based Lambda invoke, and then in future episodes, the API gateway Lambda invoke, we will need uh, to use CloudFormation. We need to create a CloudFormation template that also has the serverless uh, extensions on there. And if you don't know CloudFormation, it's okay. We're gonna use a free tool in AWS that's gonna create the CloudFormation for us. Uh, and with some just simple drag and drop components, it's gonna write that and it's also gonna just sync it automatically to our local file system. So before we get started, let's take a look at the project and then we're gonna jump into Application Composer and see how these two link together. Um, so I have my project from last time. I have my launch settings here, which again does the direct API invoke against the, the source itself. It still launches the, um, the Docker container uh, and that runs the uh, Lambda execution environment. Uh, but now we want to make it so that instead of pointing to this project, we point it to a template, which we don't have yet. Uh, and then it actually executes uh, through the template. And that way you can kind of predefine um, some of the resources, Lambda layers, and all that fun stuff inside the template, which you normally wouldn't have available to you if you executed it uh, in this particular structure. So in order to do that, again, we need to have a CloudFormation template here. Uh, you know, a couple things you can do. You can add one manually. Um, and if you already have one, I'll show you that you can actually just link it to the project uh, with inside of AWS. So let's take a look and see how that actually works. So I'm here in my AWS account. Uh, again, you, you do need to have an AWS account. Uh, there aren't any charges for using Application Composer. Uh, you can use it for free. Again, it is just a visual design tool. You're not actually um, launching any resources by using it. Uh, I have it here in my recently used, but you can also type up in here, Application Composer to get to it. Uh, when we start off here, you're going to see, you know, it's got kind of a, uh, you know, a demo project, a little um, graphic going on here. And you can start off with that demo project if you want to see how things are done. But in our case, we're just going to go ahead and create a, a new project. Um, so over here, just so you know, there's a bunch of resources that you can actually use. So uh, as you start getting familiar with this, you can kind of play around. Again, there's going to be the API gateway, which we're going to do in a, in a future episode. Right now, we're just going to do the Lambda function uh, just to keep it simple. And just as a quick reminder, over here, I don't have a template file yet, so I've got no CloudFormation going on. But what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, what I, I want to sync this to uh, my local environment. And it's going to ask me, okay, select a project folder. And here's the folder that I've got. I'm already in there. So I'm just going to say, select that one. It's going to ask me if it's okay to view the files in the file system. I'll say yes. And then it's going to say, is it okay for me to write to the file system? And I'm going to say yes. So now it's activated and we're going to go ahead and save those changes. Cool. So now we have this uh, template empty here. Well, it was already there to begin with, but now, so if we look, we have an empty template here. And as we start dragging and dropping items onto this canvas over here, uh, we're going to do our Lambda function. We're going to see that it's been updated here. And it's also been updated right here. Now, by default, it's going to just throw in whatever they, you know, predefine these as their defaults, which is in this case, it has, um, looking here really quick, you know, it's got the Node.js, so it's kind of tuned for that. Um, if you didn't see me doing this properties, I'll show you again really quick to get to properties so we can modify these. We're going to go to details, and now we have properties. Now, from here, we can start changing things around. Uh, we have the logical ID of um, the, of the uh, resource, which is this right here. So as we start changing this, and maybe we call this um, login function. If I were just to click save really quickly, we'll see that 
that's being updated. Not only is it being updated there, but it's also being updated on the local file system. So from here on out, we're just going to stick with the, the canvas view. We're going to go to details. Um, we're going to use a default of zip files fine for its deployment. Um, we, we can also do a Docker image, which uh, we'll do an episode on that in the future. Um, now it actually wants the source path. So where is this function going to be located uh, so that the cloud formation knows uh, where to point to it. Um, now, when I dragged and dropped it on there, of course, I had all these defaults and it went ahead and created that for me as well. So it created function. Again, it was Node.js. So it went ahead and did that, created just kind of a, a placeholder of the function for the handler, uh, any packaging that you might want to have for your Node.js app. But so if we go over here, and I can say, well, I'm going to change the run. I'm going to change the source path to point to what I need, which is my source login app. So we're just going to say that goes to the login. I don't put the app uh, py here. It's going to be down a little bit, a little bit uh, down more in these property settings. I'm going to switch the runtime to go to Python 3.9. Here is where I need to change the handler. So that's the app and then the Lambda handler. And don't need this much memory. This is just a very simple function. So 128, is, which is the minimum, is good. I'm going to set the timeout uh, fairly low. Um, with this thing to timeout fast if it fails. So I'm going to give it like five seconds. It's probably be, you know, it's, since it's since it's kind of a hardwired username and uh, password, it's going to be really fast anyways. Um, so let's go ahead and save that. We don't need anything else at this moment in time. So we have our Lambda function here. If we come back and look, well, now we have our Lambda function created here with everything that we really need. So we have our source, our login, our app, our Lambda handler, uh, the runtime that we selected, the 128 memory size. It's going to time out in five seconds if it doesn't uh, execute within that time. Uh, and again, you can take this all the way up to 15 minutes, but this is a very quick function. I want it to be fast. I should probably have this maybe down to two or three seconds, but you know, five is pretty good here. Now, one thing that it did do, as I mentioned before, uh, when I dragged and dropped that component on there, it automatically created this. So we do have, unfortunately, a little bit of cleanup to do here. We're just going to delete that one. And then when I changed it uh, to point to my login, it had that predefined Python file that it created here. So we're going to go ahead and delete that too. So it's, you know, it, it, it's really nice in, in some aspects that it creates some things for you. Uh, not so great in others where you've got to do a bit of cleanup. I'm sure it's going to get smarter in the future. So this is cool. You, you, right now, you've got a Lambda um, function that now has a CloudFormation template that has the SAM serverless extensions on, added to it automatically. So you've got the transformation here. So when you run this through SAM, it knows that, oh, okay, this is a SAM template. I'm going to do some transformation and modify this CloudFormation template if need be to something that is more native CloudFormation. Okay, so that was pretty easy. And so now what we need to do is just kind of wire it up. So similar to what we did before, you know, before we have where we were targeting the code directly um, and, and executing it. Now we want to now we want to tell it to launch through uh, the template that we just created. And this is really going to come in handy later on when we start looking at um, adding packages um, to our Lambda function and, and how that works, because without pointing it to the template, if you just pointed it to the source and the code, uh, it would never be it would never be able to load up those packages. Um, so getting an understanding of this is key. Plus on our next episode, when we look at API Gateway, it's going to make a lot more sense um, when we look at how a API Gateway and Lambda get invoked based off of going through this template exercise. So let's go ahead and add that configuration. We're going to add the same template based invoke. Uh, and here we've got the name that was going to show up. So, you know, if I just save this and I look up here, it's going to have that, you know, Lambda, uh, invoke Lambda. So I'm going to name this a little bit more uh, friendly for me. It's going to be my login and, uh, you know, template invoke or something like that. Template invoke doesn't really matter. This is just a name. The target is going to be a template, which again is different than the code last time. I need to know the template location. So we know that that's going to be, I've got that my root. So I got my workspace folder. Uh, slash template and uh, yeah, I'm also give it the full path here it needs to have the uh, function logical ID so with the function logical ID we can just grab that from whatever we put in here and go ahead and add that there and that's pretty much everything we want except we also do want the payload as well so we can use the exact same payload that we have uh, when we call the source it's pretty much the same thing or if you want to change that up feel free 
So we have that here. Make sure I've got a breakpoint set, which I'm pretty sure that I do. Oops. Yep, I have a breakpoint set. Um, this looks good to me. If it uh, if we run into errors, it should pretty much tell us like if, if it can't find the path or the payload. Make sure we have that right uh, or the template. But I think we're good to go. Go ahead and invoke this. We're going to say go ahead and do the template invoke. So make sure that's selected. It is and execute. And again, this is going to fire up the Docker container, load up the Lambda runtime environment, similar as when it points to the code. But here we go. So we're in here. We get the event context, and we get the event, and we get the context, I should say, and the, those parameters coming in. And so we have all the information that we would have had uh, running through the code. Um, but again, because we're pointing to the template, anything we put inside that template, uh, environment variables, uh, packages, all those sort of fun things will be loaded in here as well. So that's pretty cool that we have all that information loaded. And we're going to take a much more deeper dive in this when we go through API Gateway adding to our Lambda function so we can actually execute something through API Gateway. And then when we look into a deeper dive, when your when you're Lambda... Um, handlers and your lambda projects get much more complex with things like packages and how all that gets wired up so i hope you uh, enjoyed this episode you know please click that like and subscribe um and i will see you next time when we look at wiring this all together with api gateway